Good morning, uh, particularly in the hallowed halls of Columbia and its uh, adherence to journalism. It would be a mistake for me to bury the lead. The lead is that on Monday, starting Monday, March 30th, and continuing the 31st and April 1st, PBS across the country, thanks to WETA, my producing partner for the last 35 years, will broadcast a three-part, six-hour series uh, called Cancer, the Emperor of All Maladies. It is based on Siddhartha Mukherjee's remarkable Pulitzer Prize uh, winning book. But I think for those of us engaged over the past four plus years in trying to bring this story uh, to national attention, there are some interesting and poignant poignant backstories, uh, not the least of which is, as Katie suggested, that this was born in the sort of fiery passion of Laura Ziskin's mind and heart, and she brought us to the starting line and could not run the race with us. Uh, one of the people who delivered the story, the message of this film, Ed Herman, our narrator, uh, died of brain cancer uh, literally days after he finished the narration. And so, as so many in this room, indeed in this great city and this country, we our lives are touched by, and in this case our film bracketed by, death from this insidious disease. I come to you with a deep connection uh, to Columbia University. I was born uh, in 1953 when my parents uh, were living on Morningside Heights. My father was a graduate student uh, in anthropology at Columbia. My mother had a job at Kings County Hospital. She was trained in biology. She developed breast cancer almost immediately after my birth, and I watched uh, for the next 11 plus years as my mother slowly uh, decayed and died of breast cancer. Um, it was witnessed not only by myself, but my brother Rick, who is an alumnus of uh, Columbia University. We are connected to this great institution. My awareness and involvement of this project began with an extraordinary woman named Sharon Rockefeller, who's here, who was emerging uh, from her own life-threatening struggle uh, with cancer and had the opportunity as she was recuperating and struggling with treatments uh, to read uh, uh, hot off the presses Sid's remarkable book. Um, she asked me if I would do this. In fact, she ordered me to do it. And I had a full plate of films and could not do it, but after reading Sid's book and understanding the way in which my own mother's death had formed me and who I am now, telling histories, waking the dead, trying to have conversations with people who are no longer here, it became obviously clear that somehow I had to do this. I had an opportunity to meet Sid and begin a very long journey, but for us the real question was how we would tell the story, how we would translate this magnificent work of literature, this magnificently complex history into television for a general audience. I knew that I had to find someone who would do the day-to-day -day producing and directing, and I fortunately knew uh, all of my folks in-house were busy, uh, but I knew of the work and had admired for many years the work of Barrett Goodman, and it was a few short decisions later that we entered into, all of us, this incredibly complex journey. We're used to, Barrick and I are, are used to telling history, sort of straight historical narratives. That's not easy to wake the dead, to make the past uh, come alive. But we realized for this film to be an accurate reflection of what Sid had attempted to do, he said to us, we need an executive summary of this disease. We need to know where we've been, we need to know where we are, we need to know where we're going. And that's not something we in this media culture get. We hear a nightly news report about this breakthrough or this setback or that this problem or this new drug and we have no way to collate and organize it into any uh, principle that allows us as lay people, let alone scientists, to go forward uh, with an understanding of this disease. If it is indeed, as Sid said, just the emperor of all maladies, then we are all its subjects and are obligated to be part of a resistance movement, but what will the facts be? So 
Barrick and I and our team of writers, particularly Jeff Ward, struggled with understanding that we would have to tell a complex narrative that would have a riveting history. This is, of course, one of the greatest, if not the most important, detective story uh, ever. Uh, that it would therefore require, in the course of that history, communicating complex scientific information to a lay audience, which required ways of understanding, of illustrating, that would transcend the normal narratives that we do. But we also had to anchor it in personal experiences. I am loath to say case studies because we are drawn to human experience. And quite often in the conversation about cancer, we have left the agency of the patient out of it. And we felt obligated to anchor this with stories of real human beings like you and like me who suffer, who relate, who lose, who gain, who are cured, who die uh, from this disease. And so for the last four years, we have embedded ourselves in a couple of hospitals and other locations, become flies on the wall, and been privileged to witness that unique interaction uh, between caregivers and the patients and their families. And our film is essentially this mongrel collection of history and science and intimate uh, stories that we are extremely excited to share with you uh, beginning next week. Uh, now, the series is, as I said, um, uh, three episodes, six hours. So I've asked the guards to lock the doors. And um, we'll be out at a little bit after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I know that you're very anxious to see the whole thing. No, in fact, we have a short 10-minute clip just to wet your whistle. It's so completely unfair. You're parachuting down into a very critical point. I think it's important to understand a disease that has been with us as long as there have been us's in this planet. Um, is so very little has been known about it until the most recent times. By the 70s, the mid-70s, we were even unaware of the mechanisms that cause cancer. We were cutting it out blindly, we were poisoning it uh, randomly, we were radiating it without um, full understanding of even how it began. And so I thought we'd share with you uh, a, a brief clip uh, from a hugely important moment when the mechanisms of cancer uh, begin to reveal themselves to, at least in this case, uh, two extraordinary scientists. Minus the intimate stories of uh, individuals, uh, you can begin to apprehend uh, the complexity that faced us. All credit is due then to my colleague, Barrick Goodman, who was able to marshal the forces not only to embed documentary producers within the hospitals to record those intimate moments, which you will see when you see the entire film, but also to take the script from Jeff Ward, myself, David Blistein, and, and Barrick, and, and move this into the realm of possibility uh, with incredibly complex uh, archival research, animation, and interviews with the finest set of talking heads we've ever had in any film.